For my AP Studio Art students, uh, I want to talk today about uh, landscapes and cityscapes. So we're in your concentration portfolio, and we're exploring um, some different basic genres of photography. So I'm going to go into coursework. Let's pull this up. I'm in second semester. I already had it open second semester, and we're in concentration unit four, and we're on this is weeks four and five that I want to discuss with you. So um, weeks four and five you'll be looking at creating landscapes or cityscapes. Now I'm very open-ended with these definitions so generally I would call this landscape but I want to make sure that you understand that you can create any sort of um, landscape cityscape. It, it doesn't have to be absent of buildings or cars or anything like that or streets. So um, the concept of landscape photography for this project is I want you to um, look through all the artists that I'm going to show you today. I have several for you in the next two weeks to look at over here um, highlighted as artists for you to review and then I also have this link for you to review that I want you to choose an artist as your inspiration so this is a whole bunch of other ones for you to look through on your own. So for weeks um, four and five you will take two weeks to create the minimum of three landscape photos or cityscapes. And remember, since this is within your concentration portfolio, these photos, these three, should have a theme or an idea that you're investigating. I would recommend that you take several, dozen, hundred at least, and narrow it down to your three best that you actually turn in. So think of an idea or use one of my artists as your inspiration, um, as your guide. So it can be your starting point, or you can even just copy their style and make it your own. Okay, one of the best ways is to uh, learn to develop your own style is identifying what you admire and emulating some artists that you admire. So that's why I give you so many to look at besides inspiration, because I look at, like looking at great photos. So you have two weeks to shoot this. But I, I, I'm giving you a lot of time, obviously, with all of these concentration photos because I really want you to um, take the time to do a great investigation of your idea or your theme. All right, let's look at some examples. Um, I'm in week four right now, and I have all of these artists for you to review as well as the link. On Monday will be your discussion. Friday is your artist journal. Um, I have the very first link in landscape photography, just a, a large collection of great examples of landscape. These are more traditional landscapes that you'll look at um, that I found for you. So look through these ideas and think about how the composition, what you might like. If you see one that just looks beautiful to you, what might you do to emulate that? Okay. Um, here's another idea. This is specifically to cityscapes. Um, and this particular photographer is, this is a great example of a concentration of cityscapes. They're using a very specific idea, which is looking up, a worm's eye view up towards the sky, um, showing an idea of how you can be um, kind of overwhelmed and claustrophobic within a city with the buildings coming up around you. These are great point of view, very different points of view called Vertical Horizon. So look at this. This is a great idea for you to explore. Um, land art is going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to go more into details. In this link, you have to click here to pull it up because I can't get it to embed. But this is a, a, a different idea of a cityscape where it almost looks like just little details of tiny little um, city, tiny little landscapes, I should call it that. Um, these are manipulated, so the artists set these up. Say their um, inspiration by the artist is m most likely by the photographer Andrew Goldsworthy, who's known for making his little natural sculptures, or I guess you could call them installations. So he creates a little um, world out of natural objects. It's one way to put it, and then takes photos of it. So these are manipulated and set up and just beautiful. This is a great idea too, showing a motion series. Okay, so if you want to do something small in your backyard or front yard, these are ideas for you if you can't get to the city. 
Um, let me see if I care now. Where am I? Okay. All right, I also have um, a video for you to watch on Emerson, P.H. Emerson and his naturalist uh, photography movement way back in the 1800s, which was the original um, kind of schism between the, the technical um, photography, photography as art, and there was a, a sister movement called pictorialism. Naturalism was just like it sounds, taking pictures exactly as they appear in nature. Pictorialism was more of the style of um, emulating paintings, so setting up like beautiful paintings. So naturalism is sort of the earliest landscape photography is one way to look at it. All right, this artist, Heydrich, some great work on how you can show landscapes, cityscapes. These have a really different feeling to them. And he has quite a few projects for you to look through. Another one that I really liked. I love these creepy abandoned feeling. So you can get these at certain times of day. This one right here. What was the other one I wanted to show you? I think it was... Is it this one? They're all so good. There's a whole bunch to explore. Yeah, this one too. Just showing different landscapes, cityscapes in a different way. Um, he really is abstracting the image, making this a work of art and using the entire rectangle of space and showing us the negative space as part of the image here. That's what makes it really beautiful. Okay, lots of ideas for you. You really have to be careful setting your compositions. Some great ideas, similar to his other project. Okay, and then you'll discuss the um, photograph by Gursky for your week four. Let's look at week five. So your project is due by the end of week five. Ansel Adams is probably the best known um, landscape photographer. When people think of landscapes, they, he's usually the name that comes up first. So let's look at his work and some of his ideas. His early black and white work, beautiful. Sky series, there's a different way to look at um, landscapes. Look up. So these are really just these beautiful, um, I would consider these similar to color field paintings, which um, like by Roscoe, where he just has these big swashes of color and how they just sort of blend in together. This whole sky series is just beautiful sunsets, sunrises, and uh, you really don't see anything besides color. I love this series, it's really different. So there's something, an idea. Um, this particular artist, Matthew Brown, has landscapes where he's doing a lot of editing, manipulating to the images, making them look um, sort of like they survived a war. And this, I really like this idea. So if you want to start with something like this, I'm going to show you really quick. I have the window open. Um, you can do this in Pixlr. So go to Pixlr.com. But instead of going to Editor, just go to pixlr o -matic. There's a lot of ways you can pull this off, but I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way, hopefully. So I'll bring up a photo. Let's see if I can remember. I was going to use this one. Which one was it? I think it was... Nope. No. Nope. Where was it? This one. All right. All right, so this is uh, a landscape. They've already obviously manipulated the color a little bit. Uh, actually, a seascape. This is a seascape. Um, when you're in pixlr o -Matic, you can play with different filters like you do with um, Instagram. And you can try to find one that you like if you want to play around with it. Um, I'm going to go back because what, to the way you really want to create that um, effect of that overlay effect is you're going to go into this dial here, you're on red, you're going to go to the blue dial and you can play with these overlays and get that idea, that kind of destroyed stuff. You can do these cool like blingy blingy things there but um, this would be kind of like what we were looking at before so some this, some of these specific um, look like they have light leaks or that the negative was destroyed or you're just really kind of messing with the image and giving it lots of depth and layers so instead of just your traditional landscape, oh that looks like it's raining this one did um, 
you're coming up with a whole layer of texture on top. Okay, so there's a lot of ideas for you. So um, you can play around with that pixel aromatic. This last one is for frames. If you want to do fancy frames on the outside, which I'm not sure that that would work with this project at all. That doesn't make sense, but sometimes it would. Maybe this one. Okay, and when you're done, you would save it. You would save your image. Okay, so uh, let me find where I was at. Back here. Okay, and then the last part of, of your project is um, discuss the artist Clifford Ross in this photograph. So more, much more traditional landscape idea. Okay, so weeks four and five, I really want you to be creative with your landscapes. Come up with an idea, a theme, an idea to explore within several photos. Turn in your three best. Use one of the artists that I've highlighted to, in this video or in this link as your uh, starting point. There's a lot to look at. So really, you know, you have two weeks. There's a lot of research that goes into this. And I, I enjoy it. I love looking at pictures. So I could I do this all the time. So hopefully you will enjoy it too. And I'm looking forward to seeing your landscapes.